Peter Hill Explains, where I invite you to join the science teaching conversation with me about a lesson on mass. I've given previous lessons on light, um, I just have to think of something, and energy. These are concepts which uh, we sort of tend to teach by association, declarative, or nominative um, sort of teaching. We say that's energy, that's light, that's light, that's mass, that's mass, and do it enough uh, that we get a sort of a, a sort of understanding in terms of a linguistic understanding what it is. Um, and in this way, uh, and at the other extreme, you have a high on maths understanding of these things and an operative um, operational understanding of these things, uh, which is uh, how you measure light, how you measure energy, how you measure mass. And so you've got the nominative operational techniques, uh, the theoretical techniques, and what I'm going to do in this one is just talk about, just give it a general laid-back talk, as I've been uh, apt to do, um, and uh, just touch on a few things. Uh, so they vary, fr vary from the various ranges, but it's actually just stitches together bits of information. So you can imagine uh, I've got, there's a tapestry of information with different types of threads going in different directions, and I'm just going to pull out a thread and and wind it uh, wind it through so I don't know exactly how this fits in with the different camps of, of knowledge to do with with mass and now and it's also the historical uh, historical viewpoint so um, I'm going to start off um, pretty much um, trying to go through the minimum cognitive load so I'm not going to mention the historical origin of it or or anything to do with it what it is or anything like that, just to start mentioning things which I think um, are um, in your, would be in everyone's knowledge base and actually just moving it out in a way which doesn't sort of stretch your brain or the listener's brain too much. So the unit of mass is a kilogram and it's that's got the unit of small k, small g. Now, um, a kilo, which means thousands, things, units which are big come from the Greek. It's a small g, and g, grammar means, oh, I think, means, uh, I can't remember, it's from the French Revolution. Um, and so that's a cubic centimetre of water. That comes from the Babylonian times that they, the measure of mass was related to the volume of water. Um, uh, and that was so that's an ancient ancient thing that's been with us but now it's uh, changed uh, and is changing very quickly uh, so there is i think still uh, the um artifact or uh, archetypal kilogram the big k so with, there's a little uh, lump of um, iridium which is high density and platinum which uh, prevents it stabilizes it and allows it to be machined iridium itself is very hard so if you make an alloy. I think it's 10% platinum. Again, this is just wafting off the top of my head. Uh, I think I could, oh, it's a, um, a cylinder, so it's, uh, so you can actually just machine it down. They've machined it down to one kilogram. And that kilogram at the moment is, by definition, one, with no decimal points after, out of it. If that kilogram loses weight, the entire universe gains, it loses mass, the entire universe in real terms, um, or, or we'll talk about that in a little while. So if you uh, get in there with a pocket knife and cut, um, uh, this, uh, look, there's this parrot I've talked about before. This parrot is right up next to me. Oh, oh no, oh come on, leave me alone. These are these are very tame. All, all the birds around here, up here in the Blue Mountains are very tame. Oh, leave me alone, okay. Okay, so um, if you were <laughs> talking about trying to keep keep on track, and they're probably wanting to listen about about mass, I'm sure. Um, so if you were to ha get in there and hacksaw something off, say hack, hack it in half, no matter what you did to it, that would always be one kilogram, and this, the mass of the universe would increase, and everyone would go around uh, hitting equations. But perhaps later on this year, or by 2020, they'll move across. Uh, to another definition of mass based on a much more fundamental, um, uh, I suppose, uh, currency of the universe, which is Planck's constant. And we'll be able to measure mass 
Uh, I suppose with a light bulb and things like that. I'll, I'll talk about that a bit later. But the unit of mass is a kilogram, a kg, and there's a space. If you right now, you often see it in shops and stuff like that. They don't put the space, and they never put it in restaurants or anything like that. When they're putting it in Australia, you have to put it out if you have, have a. I don't know. It's in fast food, not in a in a, a lovely restaurant. There's a little restaurant in the Sydney Opera House, the back of the Sydney Opera House. They don't. They're, they're not forced to actually put the number of kilojoules in every food. But if you, any fast food thing, that they're supposed to tell you the number of kilojoules involved in it. Sorry, it's just interrupted there by kids coming out. My kids coming out to do some painting. However, uh, yeah, uh, all around Australia, uh, everything has to be um, marked in, kilo, uh, in kilo, kilojoules. And I think, uh, I don't know whether it's 8,700, 8,300 kilojoules is the recommended daily intake, and that's in front of every single counter, every deli counter it's got there. But much to my annoyance, uh, there's not the space between the kilo, uh, kilojoule, and sometimes they put a capital K, and with so it should be a small K, big J for kilojoule uh, going through. The, they're just around the place. It is interesting that um, people tend to get the units right. They get the units right in uh, blood products for sure, but everything else is just absolutely horrible. So that's kilograms. And um, this sort of naive story of what a kilogram is. A kilogram is the mass of one litre of water, roughly. Uh, a special litre of water, deionized water. Obviously it's got nothing but the actual water molecules in it and it's at uh, standard temperature and pressure. It may even be at the triple point. That's gone by the way, way uh, by the wayside. Uh, what I want to do, and this is sort of part of the um, uh, strange part of the thing, my brain hitting reset. Uh, I want to suggest a, a more sensible teaching method of defining the kilogram, um, which sort of, uh, like it's a little bit of work here, but it undoes a hell of a lot of work upstream in terms of chemistry. Uh, now, one of the fundamental things, which is not pressure dependent, not state dependent, is not anything dependent, is that a kilogram, a certain amount of U is in a kilogram. A unit, U is the rough unit of, when I say rough, not exact um, uh, mass of a proton. So protons and neutrons change their mass ever, ever, ever so slightly, depending on where they're put. If they're put in nickel, uh, is it nickel 63, iron 56? I can't remember which are the other sta most stable ones here. I have to remember the isotopes of it. And depending on how they're doing this, it's sort of like a, 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 a point nothingness of a... Um, percent change in their mass. So you can change the mass of a, a, a proton or a neutron a little bit, a tiny little bit at rest. That is, okay, okay. Now, this is going to upset you. I don't want to do too much, but um, if you decide to um, go for a run, with my kids coming up, can I help you guys? Sorry about that. I just got uh, a little bit interrupted there. I'll get back to family life pretty quickly. I'll get this over and Never and done with, but we were, um, and it's really good for me uh, cognitively just to remember uh, the, the line of my saying because in the classroom you get interrupted all the time. You have to keep everything back on on class. Uh, yeah, so here uh, we say we said um, I just wanted to quip that um, if you go for a run, uh, several things happen. You might lose some mass. You must respire carbon dioxide, and the carbon leaves you as you breathe out. So yeah, so you lose your mass um, by actually breathing out that carbon dioxide. It's a major method of losing losing fat. You breathe your fat out. How about that? Um, that's one aspect of it. But um, the very act of going for a run means that, from my framework, your mass increases because if you're going at any reasonable velocity, not the speed of light, you have a bit of mass dilation. This is just an idea that... Um, Mass is uh, something uh, that you have to really worry about what frame you're in. So if things are moving quickly, they mass dilate, they gain mass. 
<clears throat> and they actually physically do gain mass as measured by me you know, or in any frame that you're at we go into that for, for a little while uh, but what I was saying is that um, a while a litre of water is um, the practical thing we use and the Babylonians have used it's not really uh, a good it's a not a it's a useful one for commerce and cooking you know so you know a litre of milk is going to weigh roughly a kilogram and everything weighs roughly a kilogram uh, it's a what, what has it roughly the density of water uh, in that um, you get your leg of lamb and you defrost it or whatever it is you, you put in, in water it, it it may float a little bit above the uh, um, the level of the water. An apple, for instance, is less than the density of water. You'd hope because it floats, and an egg. Well, I think it depends. Yeah, if it floats, it's bad. If it sinks, it's got a slightly higher density than uh, than water. Cans of coke and things like that are interesting to put in. But um, we're saying. Uh, for science, we've got to. So, for science education, and for scientists have another unit of mass, and it's the unit of a, a unit. It's got the symbol U. Kilograms got kg. Symbols U is a unit. Or if people are really strict, they call it a Dalton, because Dalton recognised that uh, matter was made out of these tiny little spheres. But then it's a little bit of a uh, uh, a tooth puller. Uh, teeth puller to actually go. So it's got a capital symbol D A, but the actual unit of the U uh, U is a unit of a unit, and it's not named after one any anyone in particular. Uh, there's no one called Mr. Graham. There's no one called Mr. Unit, and uh, that's the unit of mass of, of a proton. And um, basically, uh, uh, all matter is made out of um, protons and electrons or neutrons. Uh, they're the two things. So you get a proton and an electron, it's an uncharged, or a neutron which stabilizes it all up. And so um, a kilogram uh, of uh, <coughs> matter contains a certain number of protons and neutrons, a, a certain fixed number. So every kilogram uh, weighs to within a certain approximation. There's just a, a very weak, weak variance <coughs> that um, uranium has slightly fewer neutrons and protons per kilogram than um, uh, I suppose iron or helium or well, it was mostly it would be best off to say than than iron the most stable uh, the stable uh, one and that's um, because it's got a mass uh, defect it's got something so got slightly more because it's neutrons and protons oh no, it's neutrons and protons are slightly heavier and um, they become lighter. The same number becomes a little bit lighter. So if we've got a kilogram of uranium, there's just a tiny fraction bit less when it turns eventually into iron. And that's is a huge amount of nuclear energy. It's pretty amazing to think of that very powerful energy. What I'm saying is that a kilogram of anything, pretty much anything you show to me, I can tell you, not the number of atoms, you know, that's a bit too hard, I have to know the chemicals, but I can tell you the number of I have to know the isotopes. I could tell you the number of neutrons and protons in it. Yeah, you know, pretty roughly. Pretty, and the number is not incredibly difficult to imagine. And something really make you know breaks my heart to see people uh, talk about it. I think it's six point oh four by ten to the twenty six units are in a kilogram. Now I'm not quite sure on that. I just just um, sort of that's the photograph of the um, number I've got in my pat in my mind, but it's six, but definitely six by ten to the twenty-six um, units U in a kilogram. So one kilogram equals a thousand grams, and six by ten to the twenty-six uh, U little U's. Now that's by definition. And 6 by 10 to the 26, you could say, well, imagine 10, imagine 100, imagine... Th and you go go on. But there is a, a number which is easier, 600, to down to 10 to the 24. And then um, uh, a million is 10 to the 6, a billion is 10 to the um, uh, 10 to the 9, and a trillion 
the Yanks have really finally won a son of what a trillion is. A trillion is six, uh, sorry, 10 to the 12. So that's 600 trillion trillion U's. That's pretty easy to say. So any kilogram you show in front of me will have almost exactly 600 trillion trillion protons or neutrons. End of story. Show me a kilogram of gold, a kilogram anywhere, um, a kilogram of spaghetti, a kilogram of feathers, a kilogram of um, of uh, iron um, uh, will uh, have a different uh, different uh, different um, amount of atoms for sure, and a different density for sure. But the number of protons and neutrons making up will be six hundred trillion trillion. That's easy enough. I should make a rock song about that. I've got it on YouTube and it will go viral for sure. So I've got 600 trillion trillion U's in my kilogram. I can't think of how, how you'd say it. But it's a very easy thing to go. And sort of, when you've got that in your head, everything else makes sense. So uh, it's if I've got a kilogram of something that's from one to the other and nothing, nothing changes. If there's a nuclear reaction, the number of those U's get rechanged. If it's a chemical reaction, um, the groupings of um, the actual groupings change. The chemical reactions, the chemicals don't change going across, uh, and that's the thing. So helium uh, in a chemical reaction, hydrogen doesn't go to helium. So four hydrogen, uh, four hydrogen plus a hydrogen plus a hydrogen plus a hydrogen, plus a hydrogen goes to a helium. That's a nuclear reaction. Um, a hydrogen plus a hydrogen plus a hydrogen plus a hydrogen goes to two H2 molecules. Four H's go to two H2s. Now that's a chemical, a chemical reaction. But the mass is conserved because the number of neutrons and protons are the same on either side. And I, I think that really, um, uh, really gets down to the actual basis of it. Now, this is uh, around a, a 20 minute podcast, and that's all I want to, wanted to, to really, um, uh, to really s- uh, say. I think that's enough. I think, think if I sort of start to talk to you about the nature of mass and the Higgs boson and all the different ways we think of mass and the history of mass, it'll uh, do your head in. Uh, and this is the general idea. I'm, uh, yeah. This is why you have extensive plan. We're going to we're going to let scientists into the classroom, let them teach, and you know our trade is to actually go in and actually say, oh, oh perhaps if we do it this way, it'll be a little bit better. So um, uh, again, for for mass, um, a mass of one kilogram is six hundred trillion trillion protons or or U's. The protons are roughly the same mass as a, a proton and electrons are roughly the same mass as a neutron. So you get your mass, you can select. I think I'll have uh, this mass made out of little packets, little party packs. You know, when you're at, at a party and you're giving your little kids a party and you make you make up the little lolly bags. I'm in my little lolly bags, I'm going to have all these in little lolly bags of... Um, Two protons and two neutrons, or two protons, two electrons, and two neutrons, if I want to all add it up. And that's going to be roughly, when I say roughly, not exactly, roughly for you. And uh, that's how I'm going to do the uh, do my lolly bags. And uh, that means that you will be able to do four on 600 trillion trillion <laughs> lolly bags because you're putting four lollies uh, if you've got 600 trillion trillion lollies i'm just trying to actually do some teaching here so this is where you are actually using the fact that uh, people can imagine lollies and uh, have natural uh, an, an abnormal ability to uh, follow the food they can definitely follow the food because it means that they get the same fair share and it's a whole lot of social social machinery associated with food so 600 trillion trillion lollies uh, you can select them to be half neutrons and half protons and electrons and uh, I I'd say that and in your lolly bag you're going to ha- you're going to make up four on 600 trillion trillion um, uh, heliums 
which are helium in every lolly bag of that combination of lollies put together. You may want to make a uranium-235, for, so for that I'm going to have 92 protons and uh, I count 235 minus 92. This is something where I'm still a bit woolly on doing the metal arithmetic neutrons. And they're going to have um, 600 oh, trillion trillion divided by 235, whatever it is, lolly bags. Uh, and when I say lolly bags, I mean atoms. And uh, in the various party people, um, in, in the party exchange, uh, you exchange what lolly bags people have. They trade lolly bags. Uh, really, basically, a uh, chemical reaction is where lolly bags are traded. And um, if people are happy, cheer, yay! Energy is given off. If uh, people are sad and kills the party uh, you have to put energy and you have to turn up music and you have to load in energy to get that get that to happen so that's just a very um, uh, it's it's hard to say it's not uh, declarative or nominative it's not pr uh, operational so you've got a declarative nominative way is where I declare that kids this is a kilogram feel a kilogram it's named a kilogram, and here's examples of a kilogram. A lot of people say that's teaching a concept. Um, operational, a kilogram is what you get when you do a, an operation. Um, then there's um, uh, mathematical versions of it. A kilogram is what you get when you accelerate something by that much with that much force, or there's about four different ways, probably five different ways now that you can actually get it six six different ways that you can actually define a kilogram so a kilogram is real sort of s the central station of, of science thinking to go across and what i've explained now is probably um uh, there's a historical example of that so it's one two three four five and this is probably a six uh way of um it's quiet uh belief that we're not teaching a, a, a lot of people believe that you should teach stuff which is historically consistent and you obviously have to do that if you've got people setting a test where they only answer a certain amount of questions and you've got high stress kids who can't think laterally so therefore you've got to teach them the way that it's taught this is sort of that six way which is outside saying hang on let's just walk around the knowledge here and connect this with this we're going to deconstruct it up here, up the road in chemistry why don't we take some of that chemistry and put it back in here into the definition of the kilogram to make it a little bit simple so that's more um, I suppose an executive marketing an MBA style of discovering a kilogram so that's what you've had this episode thanks a lot for listening podcast another story comes to a close it's been a pleasure sharing this moment in time with you may you discover truly amazing things understand them and tell others thanks for listening